Hey everyone, Tristan back with another video here. And in this video, let's take a look at it, review these. These are the Hi-Fi Man HE6SE headphones. And these are them here. Uh, these retailed for, I think around $1,700. Now I say retailed because they're no longer made, I believe. I believe they were just a limited production run. Um, hence the SE, which stands for Special Edition. They're kind of a remake or a special edition version of the original HE6 models. And they're not a real popular headphone, or, or they don't produce these in real, um, you know, high volumes. The reason is, is because these headphones are extremely difficult to drive. They're one of the hardest to drive headphones out there. That's one of the reasons why they're not super popular. A lot of people don't buy them because they don't have a source or an app that can actually support playing these well. So let's talk about build quality and ergonomics and sound, and then we'll also compare them to like the Hi-Fi Man Aria headphones that I've reviewed in the past as well. So with these, you definitely get a little bit of a better box and packaging than you do with the Aria headphones. You get an outer sleeve right here, and uh, this is the back. And then you get this sort of nice wood box as well. It's kind of a leather covered wood box, and then you kind of open this up. You've got this sort of standard satin headphone holder in here, and then in the middle would be your cables. Um, so it's generally a nicer box than you know what comes with the Aria. And then just like the Aria, you get a booklet here with you know um, the instruction manual and a letter from the CEO of Hi-Fi Man, Fon Bang, and, and it just goes into some of the details about the uh, HE6 SE. Now the cable that comes with these headphones uh, is the kind of surgical tubing type cable, at least it feels like that. That's the kind of uh, housing that these cables have. It's a longer cable than what comes with the Aria. I believe this is maybe like two meters. Um, and it's a decent cable, although I believe it is a silver plated copper cable. So I'm probably going to be looking to replacing this cable pretty soon with the pure copper cable. But of note, it comes with this little adapter. So the cable itself is a four pin XLR balanced cable. And then you get a four pin XLR to quarter inch adapter, you know, if you don't have a balanced headphone amplifier uh, to run these with. So that's uh, kind of nice. But as you've probably heard, the sort of sheathing on this cable does feel a little bit weird. It feels a little bit like surgical tubing, although in general it's a pretty decently sounding cable in terms of the wiring inside. Uh, it does feel a little bit cheapy in terms of the uh, sheathing, and I would have preferred, you know, a cloth sheathing or something to the cable. And on the ear cup side, you have 3.5 millimeter uh, connectors, so you can very easily get. Uh, an aftermarket headphone cable with 3.5 millimeter connectors and it'll fit right in there. Uh, the old version of the uh, HE6 had 2.5 millimeter connectors, so um, this is definitely a better connector. The 3.5 millimeter connector does tend to be a bit more robust and nicer than a 2.5 millimeter connector. In terms of the build and ergonomics of these headphones, I mean, I think they look pretty cool. They're kind of simple and austere if you take a look at them. Uh, you know, the headband is a better build quality than what's on the Aria, I think. Uh, it's just, um, you know, it has this plastic pieces here uh, on that sort of lower part of the headband. And it just seems a little bit nicer than the Aria in terms of the build quality. Also, the comfort band seems maybe a little bit more sturdy, a little bit better, uh, but, you know, roughly equivalent. You still have the headband part, the top part here is routed out for lightness, which I like. Um, now these don't swivel like the Aria, so I can't bend these forward or backwards, but that hasn't really been a problem for me. It hasn't posed a problem. And then the ear cups are also plastic on the outside as well to help with weight. These headphones are a bit heavier than the Hi-Fi Man Aria headphones, uh, but not by much. They're still under 500 grams. So still, you know, definitely a noticeably heavier, but still a uh, headphone that's not super heavy. And then on the ear pads, the part that touches your skin, that contacts your skin is a polyester. And on the outside is like a fake leather. And these ear pads are actually pretty plush. I think these ear, these ear pads are actually more plush than what's on the Hi-Fi Man Aria or on some of the headphones that have the uh, oval shaped ear cups, whereas this is a round shaped ear cup. So the ear pads are a bit plusher on these. Although the opening for your ear, and I don't know if you can see in this video, but the opening for your ear is definitely smaller. It's a round circle, not ear shaped. So it's definitely smaller than um, what's on like the Aria, for example. And that makes them a little bit less comfortable for long periods of listening. Although the fact that they have plusher ear pads means that you know you can still wear them for uh, quite a long time. And you know I don't really find it, the ear the opening of the ear hole being a problem. The opening of the ear pads do sort of rest on my earlobes a little bit. 
Um, but I find that I can listen to these for as long as I would want to listen to headphones in one sitting without really a problem. So yes, they're not quite as comfortable as one of the other hi man headphones like the Arias or the uh, HE1000 series that have the much bigger drivers and much bigger um, ear opening and, and, a, and an ear shaped ear opening that's oval that fits really around your ear. This fits a little bit more sort of on your ear, so to speak. But again, um, not uncomfortable, given the fact that the ear pads are quite soft and plush. Let me show you how these look on. All right, so these are how they look on. And as you can see, they're pretty cool. I mean, I think the styling is not bad on these. You know, some people have said they don't really like the styling of these. I mean, they're kind of simple looking or something like that. I think they're a pretty cool style. I mean, they're not um, anything totally special to look at or whatever, but um, I really like it. I, I mean, I think they look pretty cool. There's no creaking when I try to move these around or anything. So I think in general, the overall um, comfort and build quality of these is definitely a cut above the Hyphaman Aria. Now, as I mentioned, the HE6SEs are probably one of the hardest to drive headphones out there. Uh, Hi-Fi Man recommends that you have a headphone amplifier that puts out at least two watts. Certainly they benefit from more wattage and that has definitely been my experience. I run these typically on my Accord Hugo TT2, which in single-ended mode can output a maximum of 7.3 watts. However, that's at 18 ohms and these are 50 ohm headphones. So on that headphone amplifier and DAC, uh, the Hi-Fi Man HE6s are probably receiving maybe like three to four watts at 50 ohms. Um, so that's really pretty good and they sound uh, excellent on the TT2. However, when I try these on my Hugo 2, which really outputs only maybe about one watt, uh, these just really didn't, it didn't cut it for these. Uh, they just sounded a bit sort of tinny and thin and lack of bass response is something that I'll notice, that I noticed. So that's one way that you can tell if you don't really have enough power to dry these. They'll just sound uh, kind of tinny and, they, and, they'll, and they'll just kind of like lack bass. But as I say on my Accord Hugo TT2, um, that drives these headphones amazingly well. And that's really going to be the major caveat with these headphones. The HE6 SEs really require an amplifier that can drive them well. And, uh, but when you do, oh man, it, they sound amazingly energetic, amazingly powerful, um, and they don't sound like they're struggling whatsoever. But again, that's the major thing with these. You do have to have enough power to be able to drive them. And the, probably the vast majority of people don't. So now let's go ahead and talk about the sound signature and the sound of the Hi-Fi Man HE6 SCs. Everything I'm going to be talking about here is when you're driving these with a proper amplifier. So, so please recognize that. Now I've read on some of the forums that the sound of the HE6 SEs compares very favorably to the top of the line Susvara headphones, which are like $6,000 headphones and these are $1,700 headphones. And if you get them used, certainly you can get them less than that uh, because they use the same or very similar driver. And in fact, the Susvaras are also equally as hard to drive as well. And by the way, by hard to drive, what I mean by that is although these are 50 ohm headphones, the sensitivity of them is only 83 dB. So that is definitely a hard to drive headphone for sure. Contrast that to the Arias, which I think have a 90 dB sensitivity. Um, it doesn't sound like much, but that really does add some a lot more sensitivity. The difference between 90 dB on the Arias and, and 83 dB on the 6SEs is not insignificant. Yeah. So, so in terms of the sound signature of the Hi-Fi Man HE6SEs, uh, they just sound, um, to me, really energetic, really warm. They have a lot of oomph behind them. Um, they don't sound weak or lacking in any part of the frequency spectrum. Uh, the bass really booms really well. Uh, the mids are very euphonic um, and definitely more present and uh, not as sort of hollow sounding as the mids on the Hi-Fi Man Arias, for example. And then the highs also aren't as harsh as on the Arias as well. The highs on these, I think, are a little bit more natural sounding. In fact, the overall sound signature on these uh, is definitely more natural sounding than the Arias overall in general. Um, but they're a bit of a darker sounding headphone for sure. A little bit more closed in, not quite as a wide sound stage, and more of a natural sound. And that's the main thing with these headphones. They sound very natural. And in that respect, better than the Arias in terms of the natural in terms of the natural sound of these when driven correctly there's just something that's just very right on with the sound of the HE6 SEs and I have heard on some of the forums that it, even like the bass sounds better than what's on the Susvara headphones although the Susvaras have slightly better highs but in terms of bang for your buck 
when you're comparing these with the Sosfars, of course, these are a lot better. The Sosfars are like $6,000 headphones and these are like 17 something $100 headphones. So all in all, these are really quite amazing headphones when driven properly. Um, they have a real severe lack of distortion and the lack of any real problems in any of the frequency spectrum. And they just tend to sound really sweet uh, in this frequency spectrum. And the soundstage is pretty wide, not as wide as the Aria, a little bit more closed in feeling. And again, in terms of comfort, uh, they're a little bit heavier as well. And again, the opening for your ears is a little bit more closed as well. But the fact that the ear pads are slightly more plush uh, actually kind of makes up for that. These headphones just have a sound that is just really involving and engaging and non-fatiguing when driven properly. And I find that I'm reaching for these headphones most of the time uh, when I'm playing from my Cord Higo TT2, which again, does have enough power for them. They're definitely quite special sounding headphones indeed with a sound that you just wanna to return to over and over again that's extremely involving. They're not gonna be for everyone because just most people aren't going to have or want to invest the money in a high power amplifier to be able to drive these properly. And in fact, Hi-Fi Man even sells an adapter that you can use with these to plug into the speaker outputs of like a, a, you know, a home stereo amplifier uh, to actually drive these, uh, believe it or not, because these can actually be, be driven up to like 20 watts. So um, yeah, these can actually stand to really have a lot of oomph and power behind them uh, if you're willing to do that. But the minimum that Hi-Fi recommends is two watts of output. So yeah, so yeah, definitely kind of not for everybody and definitely finicky with regards to being driven. But uh, once you drive them well, um, they are amazing sounding headphones. So thanks for watching. This has been my look of the Hi-Fi Man HE6SE headphones. For any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them. And I will see you in my next video.